Recently, I came across two startup high-tech companies making large kitchen appliances that are pretty interesting. One makes an oven, the other makes an induction cooktop. Both of these companies and both of these products use a backup battery built into the appliance. So during a power outage, you can still cook a meal. That, however, is not the coolest part of this. I'm not trying to sell you on either one of them, and I have no affiliation. However, there's some underlying concepts that I think we need to be aware of as do-it-yourself solar nerds. Uh, I think there's some things we can learn here. This company is called Copper, and they make this high-tech premium oven. The next company is Impulse that makes the cooktop. And both of these are premium products. They also carry a premium price. What I find interesting is how the battery works in a large kitchen appliance like this. A typical kitchen oven can draw 10,000 watts of power or 10 kilowatts, and some can draw considerably more. In North America, most of our outlets are 120 volts, but for large appliances, we have to use a 240 volt outlet at 40 to 60 amps to be able to supply the 10,000 watts we need for a kitchen oven. Fortunately, we can use time to our advantage. We may only run this oven for less than an hour a day. But remember, we are powering the oven directly off of a built-in battery. We used 10 kilowatt hours out of that battery by using the oven for one hour. However, we don't need to recharge the battery in only an hour we can take our time and recharge it much slower. So we don't need to use one of these big honking 240 volt circuits. Instead, we can use standard household circuits in North America. You can charge the battery back up in six hours. Also, by using a lower wattage for a longer time, it makes it much easier to recharge this battery with solar. Okay, so what can we learn or take away from this? Now, I'm not saying that we should try to build an oven and put a battery into it. However, if somebody out there figures out how to do that, please post a video and share it with the rest of us. I'd love to see it. Instead of a built-in battery, let's use a standard inverter or a power station. And we'll come back to this idea in just a minute. The inverter in my current backup system is a 3000 watt grow watt and I send the output of this through a transfer switch to be able to power circuits in the house, including lights, computers and electronics, two window air conditioners, and the refrigerator. And the inverter can handle all of it with no problem. However, if I wanted to add the oven and even if I only wanted to use the top burners on the oven and not the oven itself, it would need another three to 5,000 watts and it would need it at 240 volts. So the grow watt cannot handle that. I would need to upgrade this inverter to some kind of an inverter that can handle 8,000 watts and 240 volts. Not only do I need a new inverter, but I would have to upgrade all of the cabling, the battery cabling, the AC cabling, the breakers, everything in the system would have to get upgraded to handle this 240 volts, 8,000 watts. So instead, I'm going to let the GrowWatt continue to run the circuits that it already happily runs. Over in the kitchen, I may add a separate inverter or power station to handle the large kitchen appliances. Now let's switch gears and take a look at this 10,000 watt gorilla in the room, the oven. Let's look at replacing that with much more efficient appliances. Okay, this is our old oven that was in the house when we bought it. Um, this oven's at least 30 years old. Um, we stopped using the oven part of it quite some time ago when we got this reveal. Now, we did use the burners on the top of the oven until recently, and we picked up an induction stovetop. Now, the third choice for cooking is the microwave up here, which uses much less power compared to the old oven. 
Now this is the Breville convection oven. Got it set for 375. We'll turn that on. It starts preheating. So that's running at about 1700 watts right now. All right, so let's look at this cooktop here. All right, so we're going to see how many watts this takes. Now I've got some water in that pan. Oops. Get this on. It starts out at 11, and that will actually start boiling water fairly quickly here. But I don't normally, once the water gets boiling, this water was already a little warm. And I'm drawing a thousand watts, just over a thousand watts right now. With this old cooktop, it would be pulling probably between two and three thousand watts. Most of the time you're cooking at about seven on here, which is a medium heat, and that only draws about 620 watts. Next, let's check the wattage of the microwave. And there we go. And I'm going to just run the microwave for 30 seconds or something here. Okay. So that's pulling about 1,346. We'll call it 1,350. Now, we aren't trying to be off the grid. We actually are on the grid, but I want to have power during a power outage and still be able to cook. Now, we already have lights, air conditioning, all of our electronics are working off of my normal solar system. From my inverter, I feed this transfer box, and we have one circuit in here labeled oven, and that feeds an outlet above the microwave. We have one outlet there that can be fed from the solar system and that's actually up here feeding this microwave uh, and during a power outage we just take that cord and plug in the Breville or the cooktop or whatever we want to cook on at the time but one unit at a time if i wanted to put another inverter or a power station in here i could possibly run two or all three of these at the same time depending on how large it is now, as I've already mentioned, the standard kitchen oven is five to 10,000 watts. But if we replace that with a convection oven and an inductive cooktop, we can drop the wattage needed to less than half. Now, I've designed my system to primarily be a backup system for power outages. And in that case, we would substitute the convection oven with a microwave, which draws a little bit less power. And now we're down between 2,000 and 3,000 watts. And if you only use one appliance at a time, you're down to 1,800 watts or less. So we have choices to make when we're designing our solar backup system. One way to do it is to build a large system and use a powerful inverter with multiple batteries, then using a transfer switch, tie that into your household circuits that are existing. The other way is to use one, two, or more smaller inverters or power stations and place them in different rooms or near the appliances that they need to run. There are multiple advantages here, and the first is that you can build this slowly over time, sort of a pay-as-you-go plan. You also have redundancy. In other words, if one of these units fails, your whole system doesn't go down. And if one of these units fails, it's probably going to be less expensive to replace or repair just one small unit than a large inverter. This is a big one. You don't have to try to tie into your existing house wiring because then we get involved in all the grounding and bonding issues that we've discussed in so many videos. If you'd like to see those, I've got a whole series on grounding and bonding for your solar system. And lastly, you can pick one of these things up and take it out and use it for something else, camping, boating, tailgating, etc. Now, everybody's situation is different. Everyone's needs are different. So it may not work for you. It may be better to use a large system. And one case I can think of that would probably be designing a off-grid cabin or an off-grid house. You probably want to go with a large system. However, for a lot of people, it may be easier to use multiple smaller systems. Another takeaway from this video is always use the most efficient appliances that you possibly can. That way you can downsize your inverters, batteries, everything in your system. Anyway, that's all we've got for this video. Thanks a lot for watching.